So can you take me through your story from the time you were diagnosed with cancer to where you are now today? Okay, so when I got diagnosed, it was kind of just a shock because when I was growing up, it was I always envisioned myself like being not perfect, but like I had a set like pathway for myself. And so when I heard that, I was in shock and I was like, what is going to happen to my hair? Like that was the first thing that came mm -hmm. to my mind. So that kind of struck me. And then when I got to the hospital, it was sick kids, so it was nice. Um, mm -hmm. It just felt like I was going for a checkup and I was staying there. And then when I started chemo, I didn't feel anything because I just had an IV. And then when they told me I was going to get a pick in my arm, mm -hmm. which is like this, a line that goes, to the, they give your chemo through that, yeah. I kind of started feeling really self-conscious. So I'd wear long shirts in the summer when it was like 30 degrees. Um, I didn't go to school for the longest time when I had no hair, so I don't know. When I saw my pillow in the morning, there was hair there. I was just, I did not want to believe it. Mm -hmm. So um, I always had anxiety, but it definitely amplified when um, I started losing my hair and then having to go to school and like facing all the people I saw on a regular basis. Um, it was definitely that. And then I think the depression just came about with everything going on and then not being able to like do sports and concentrate in school because I'm a perfectionist when it comes to marks. Mm -hmm. So when I knew that I'd have to like leave school for a while because I'd go five times a week, um, it was definitely that. And then just um, losing a lot of friends. I was always the one person that never fit in. So losing the friends that I worked so hard to get um, was kind of not my ideal situation. Mm -hmm. And then, um, so in the summer, I guess I realized who my true friends are, or I thought I did. And then in September, I really found out who my true friends were, and I was okay with the fact I had only one good friend. Um, everything was on a steady path. And then in November, I kind of um, went back into like the depression. I was really low. Like I go from like that, it's like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So I got really low again, and they thought at this point I was off the medication. I was off chemo, I beat cancer, everything is great. Mm -hmm. um, then I just kind of went back into it, so they put me back on medication. Now I'm stable. It's just the fact, like, seeing all these people going to parties and having fun and, like, having all these friends, it kind of sucks. But now I'm good. Um, I still deal with it on a regular basis, just not so frequently. Mm -hmm, for so, yeah. sure. And you've gotten recently involved with the, the Feet Depression Walk yeah. and stuff. How did that involvement come about? Um, so I was actually on the mom swap on Facebook and I saw Carly's post and I just, since I had depression, I thought it would be a great thing to just do with a couple of my friends. Mm -hmm. And then, so I just called her for more information, just how to sign up. Cause I had no idea how to do that. Mm -hmm. And she, I forget how we started talking, but I started saying, yeah, like I've been through this, this and this. And then she said she'd been through all this stuff. So we kind of just like kept sharing mm -hmm. and she thought it would be, she has no youth representatives in her council, so she thought maybe um, I would be a good fit. So she just kind of asked me like basic questions, like if would you be okay speaking? But I didn't know what I was getting myself into because <laughs> I'm very socially awkward when it comes to talking. So um, I just kind of agreed and then she called me f uh, the next day and then told me that there's a council meeting and I kind of, I was a bit vulnerable because I didn't know what I was getting myself into, but <laughs> yeah. I really wanted to be a part of something. Mm -hmm. So I thought it would be great just because um, I feel like it would be important to have people have more awareness about this whole mental illness. So yeah, and then just after the speech yesterday, um, she wanted to let me know that next year if I wanted to be a part of the council because it's kind of too late now because it's in a month, mm -hmm. I can do that. and. I don't know, it just kind of happened very quick. Like, mm -hmm. it all happened last week, so. But yeah, she's someone I can really trust now, so. For sure. Everything's meant to be. Awesome, awesome. So, um, what would you say are some of the biggest challenges for people with mental illnesses? Everything. Um, it all. I guess it all depends on what you have. Like, mm -hmm. I know people that have anxiety, but they can talk to everybody. But mm -hmm. for me personally, it's just kind of being in a situation where you don't know what's gonna happen and with a bunch of people you don't know. I'm more worse when it comes to like being in a room with teenagers I don't know just because I compare myself. Um, but like every day is a struggle with not knowing what's going to happen. Um, 
especially when you're alone, it's really hard. I don't like being alone. Like, I'll ask my parents to do something every single minute. Um, but when you're alone, it's really hard because mm -hmm. you're just sitting there. And then it gives you time to think, and then thinking turns into overthinking. And then overthinking turns into impossible situations, but you believe it'll happen. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. For sure. Um, so what do you think friends and family of individuals suffering from mental illnesses can do to lessen the challenges? I think just knowing a lot of people that have it. I think if you notice your child or someone in your family is struggling in any kind of way, I would suggest going not to push them into getting help, but maybe research some possibilities because a lot of people don't know they have it themselves so they're obviously they're not going to come out about it mm -hmm. so i feel if you, you as a parent you like take that extra step um it could uh, like save a lot of people's lives because a lot of people decide to take their lives um some people don't know how to deal with it that's mm -hmm. just their way of dealing with it and if parents do that it'll also it will help them like early on, it's better to do it earlier than mm -hmm. never or like later on when it's worse. So I feel like as parents, you should just step on that if you notice mm -hmm. anything or yeah. Or just, or just like simply ask your child, like, how is your day or like, how are you honestly doing? Because a lot of people don't have that parent child relationship. Mm -hmm. they don't like have I open personally lines. didn't really. Mm -hmm. So when I opened up it. Me and my parents definitely got closer. For sure, yeah. yeah so, so, like, having more people aware of yeah. what to look out for and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, because it's definitely, definitely a common thing um, mm -hmm. nowadays. I think it is. I never heard of it before I got diagnosed because I guess I wasn't really looking for it. But, yeah, because a lot of people will say, oh, I'm so nervous to present or, like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. Like, that may be a sign of anxiety. Mm -hmm. That's definitely one of my symptoms. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, definitely. Um... Uh, what do you think that the community can do to lessen the challenges, not just individuals? Um, I think, like, using this as an example, the walk is a really um, important thing to do for the community because since we're such a small town and, like, Oxbridge is a small town, you don't really hear about mental health anything. Mm -hmm. It's kind of just hidden and packed away because something my guidance counselor said to me is, cancer and uh, mental health is on the same level like they're just as important except for cancer you can see on the outside mm -hmm. mental health you can't see so i think if people did as many donations awareness things like walks runs um, just as much as they did for cancer i feel like it would definitely make people aware because when people hear cancer they take it serious when mm -hmm. people hear i'm depressed or i have anxiety they they don't, don't have take the same understanding. The, yeah, they don't have the same understanding. And there's more supporters, obviously, for cancer because mental health, I feel like it's in, still such a new thing. Like, everyone normally tries to keep it a secret. For cancer, you kind of can't keep it a secret. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if, not just Oxbridge, but if towns or cities did more things for mental health, um, even if it's like a bake sale or raising awareness, raising donations, I feel like it would help a lot mm -hmm. because this is the first thing in Oxbridge I've ever heard of that to do with mental health. So yeah, that's, that's why true. at school we're trying to start something just because to get the ball moving. Mm -hmm. So there's more things to support it. For sure. For sure. Um, do you know of any resources or supports that currently exist in Oxbridge for people suffering from mental illness? No. Yeah, no, I don't think there is anything. I think like Carly said yesterday, the closest, if you were to go to like a social worker, um, Port Perry, I think it's called Ontario Shores. Mm -hmm, I think that, yeah. and I know at school they have like social workers and stuff, but a lot of people don't want to talk to a stranger. They would rather talk to like their friends or people who have similar situations. So I feel like if we had like kind of like a group or mm -hmm. something like that's what, that's why we're trying to do that at school. Yeah. But like even outside, like for people who may be in grade eight, because mm -hmm. yesterday when the um, the girl at the count, the meeting, she said how that grade eight stood up and read this whole thing about her depression and like the, it happens to people all ages. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so how did you get the idea to start a the mental health group at your school? Um, well, it's always been an an idea in my head, but the event that like really triggered that was when um, that the guy that I used to go to school with, he committed suicide and 
it kind of just made me wonder, like, why did our school not do anything before? Like, mm-hmm. I always wondered that, but it just really struck me. Mm-hmm. Um, I just feel like you hear about it so often, and we, like, there's been so many people that have taken their lives. So, like, why isn't our school doing anything? So, if our school isn't, my friend and I decided we're going to do something. Mm-hmm. So, that's why when they sh- um, shot down our idea first, we kind of said no and we kind of got the signatures and we got like a petition kind of thing mm-hmm. and that's why we tried again because it is important and For sure. you can't just give up if what what was the reasoning behind them not approving the group there's um i think they talked to the board or i don't know if it was the board or guidance and they said that there's too many red flags and it might actually be more triggering for students that are experiencing stuff but like one teacher said to us that it might make her daughter more depressed um, I don't agree with that, but like everyone has their own opinion, but mm-hmm. I don't agree with that because it's not like we're promoting it. Yeah. Um, You're we're trying just, to like raise awareness. Yeah, raise awareness, stuff. do like fun things like um, bake sales and stuff like that and mm-hmm. just talk about it. Like. Yeah, would you guys have like weekly meetings where you come we together thinking, and Yeah, because we have a stuff? teacher that would like to um, give us her classroom for that one day. So, And we have so many teachers behind it, so we would come together and just share whatever, whether it's like stressed out or feeling this way I feel like it would be a good idea so um so what were the red flags that they they said um so they said the one about um it's going to trigger more people Mm -hmm. um they said that they would have to get therapists to come to your weekly meetings which I understand that but I think guidance is for like that's Mm -hmm. that's good enough they're certified in that kind of stuff like you don't have to go out of your way and like I get that but I feel if we, if someone was in our circle and they said something that's very triggering and could potentially like harm them, um, I'm sure we'd step up and tell somebody mm-hmm. higher than us. Um, just because I feel like people, like students, I know I, me personally, I would rather talk to a student over an adult that mm-hmm. I don't know or teachers, especially teachers. So yeah, that was a red flag. And they don't want to be responsible if that ever happens. So I understand that, but you're a teacher. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. For sure, for yeah. sure. <laughs> um, so what have you been doing to combat these challenges? I You said you started a petition? We did like kind of a petition or students that are interested. Um, we raised a lot of awareness on Instagram. Um, we posted like everything that's happening and from that we got people's attention and a lot of people actually messaged me and wanted to be a part of a council even though we didn't even think that far yet (laughs) but um yeah that's what we've done so far to do that um we made meetings as well with like um our guidance counselor and our principal just to so we can talk to everybody in our school not Mm -hmm. leave like the principal out or leave the guidance out like we have everybody's everyone's in the loop yeah yeah so it's not like oh well they didn't go past this with me or anything so for sure yeah. awesome um so uh, you kind of already went over what the group would look like and be kind of like weekly meetings yeah weekly meetings um we were talking about um doing like potential kind of like a walk or kind of like we wanted to make it outside of the community as well like into mm-hmm. the community i should say um outside of school uh just for the purpose of like a lot of people who have anxiety and depression they don't have that many friends so i feel like if we did this everyone would kind of feel like a team Mm -hmm. and we could like i know at school um a lot of people act like they they're not your friends in class i mean outside of class but like in class they are your friends so i feel like this would be good if like everyone stuck together outside of class Mm -hmm. and stuff so yeah Yeah. because i know i've made a couple friends already from just getting people to sign a petition Mm -hmm. so yeah awesome awesome so is there anything you'd like to add or you feel like there's anything i'm missing in regard to the group and everything um just the fact that people with mental um illnesses are not scary they're not mental (laughs) um (laughs) i think a lot of people are like like they think that way they don't want to get themselves involved with people that have um, mental illnesses um yeah like everyone has mental health so mm-hmm. I don't get why people should be judging that way, but everyone does themselves. So mm-hmm. I just think everyone's normal. But there's just some things trigger people more than others. Yeah, everyone's kind of dealing with stuff yeah, mentally, but yeah. some people... And a lot of people don't know affected. about yeah. it, so... 
Yeah. For sure. Awesome. Well, that's all my questions. Thank okay. you so much for coming you. in. I appreciate you. you coming in and whatnot. No problem.